I thought it'd be a good day because Mr. Tumbleweed opened today. Um, but there's no other daylily flowers open at the moment other than one that's a diploid and this is a tetraploid, so I can't cross them. So I wanted to show you how to save pollen um, for use at a later time. Um, so when to collect pollen? Usually like around 11 o'clock for us in zone 5B is when the pollen um, is actually readily available and it's light and fluffy, it's not wet. So you wanna store it when it's just like that powdery, light, fluffy goodness. Do you see that butterfly? It's awesome. Cool. Um, so anyway, so I've been um, taking off um, the pollen and putting it in this little jar. And I just wanted to show you before I finish um, right here. So this is the little orange pollen. And so what I do is I'm gonna put this on the rock because it's kind of easier for me to show you. Let me put it on this flat guy here because you need like a million hands to do this. Um, and literally, if it's light and fluffy and perfect, you're gonna be able to scrape this off. See how it's coming off on the toothpick? Mm. So we just do that and we put it in the jar. So if you store it light and fluffy and perfect, and I'm gonna put this in a jar for, I'm probably gonna put this in the freezer because I don't have a lot of daylilies opening right now, uh, but this will store for like a week in the fridge, or you can put it in the freezer if you need longer than a week. So see all that in the bottom? I have it marked with number one because I have a list of pollen um, that I'm saving in jars. And Mr. Tumbleweed is the first collection of pollen for 2022. So now anything that I wanna cross tumbleweed with, I don't have to coordinate timing because obviously that's super early. Um, and everything else, like these buds, look at, we're not even really close to opening, even though we have a lot coming. So if you cross it, how are you gonna cross it? You can't cross them when they're not open at the same time. So you can save your pollen and that's what I'm doing now. So I have some pollen from tumbleweed and anything else that I wanna cross it with when it, when it opens, you just take this little toothpick, grab some pollen, and you're gonna dab it right on this long pistol right here. You're gonna dab it right on the end of that. Um, and then you will wait to see if a seed pod forms. This thing is blurry. Oh, oh there it is. Yeah. So, yeah, so you just, then I'll just use this for hybridizing later, but I didn't miss out on crossing one of my favorites that bloomed for the first time this year um, with some of my other crazies in the yard. So, so you only have one day to do this then, right? No, there's It's a other day ones. lily, right? Yeah, oh, well, yeah, but you have to collect it in the morning, like not really super early morning because the pollen's not fluffy and out yet. Um, but usually like 11 o'clock here is like good, especially on a sunny day. Um, so now it's like readily available and perfect. Um, and then I can do this anytime that there's a bloom open. So I can collect it for hybridizing so, at a later date. So what would you hybridize that with? Like something white or something similar in color? Oh, I would just cross two. Anything that is absolutely gorgeous that I love, as long as they're both tetraploids, I would cross them. Hope a seed pod forms. Wait about two months for that seed pod to be mature. Take Then I harvest the seed pod, collect the seeds, and those are the ones I start over winter and have seedlings like Lily Lane. Those are the, that's what I do. So if you wanna, you don't really know what they're gonna look like, but that's the fun part of it. There's a lot of anticipation with, ooh, I just crossed these two beauties. What am I gonna get? You know, what do their kids look like? You know, like you and I, we get together. It's like, what are our, what are our kids gonna look like? You never know. <laughs> you could have, Luckily you could have they beauties look like or, you, thank God. Huh? Thank God they look like you. Oh, well, I don't know. People people say Blake looks like you. Look, we have um, bluebirds nesting again in the box. Holy cow. Tons of bluebirds this year. But anyway, so these this is eventually what you get after you save your seeds um, and you give them a cold dormant period and then you start germination and then you get seedlings and that you hope that the seedlings get big enough and bloom. Most of these will probably bloom next year, but I'm hoping for at least one bloom on something that I've either purchased um, from seed or that I've created in my own yard, so. So is it possible the butterflies will create their own 
by going from lily to well, lily? Well, they are pollinators, but the problem is you don't really know what pollen they're carrying. So you could collect seed pods that you're not intentionally doing, but that would mean you need a huge amount of space to grow them, to wait for them to bloom, and then to see if you like them. And then you decide if you're gonna keep them or if they're just crappy blooms or they don't, you know, not all of these are gonna be gorgeous. So I think there was a hybridizer that said um, there, that he has like one keeper out of a thousand seedlings that he grows from seed. So that's not really that encouraging, but, um, yeah, you gotta try it. And plus, you know me, I wanna try something that I haven't done before. So I had success doing the, um, um, doing this hybridization last year and I had one beautiful, like I got lucky. It bloomed on our anniversary last year. So this is kind of like, that was fuel to help me um, take all of the day lilies that I purchased last year that didn't bloom. Now I'm getting new blooms on these and I'm gonna save the pollen or I'm just gonna cross them um, with whatever's open at the time. So this is exciting. We'll have so, stuff. And if I have too many, you know. So say all your lilies blossomed here on Lily Lane and you went and you hybridized two that you liked. I cross-pollinated them. Cross-pollinated. What if a bee comes along and decides he wants a piece of the action? That is true. You have to, you, you can, like, if you're really super serious about it, you can put the mesh bag over... The, the seed over the, the flower that you hybridize or pollinated, um, but I'm not that worried about it. it. Once that pollen's on there and I know I'm doing it early enough that it, the, the likelihood of it happening is little, um, I'm just doing this for fun, man. So is it possible then if you have a lot of lilies and pollinators come and they do go from lily to lily that they could change the colors of your lilies? Well, like, they, it depends on what what takes, what pollen takes in the, yeah, it depends on how long my pollen's been on there. It depends on if the bee knocks off my pollen and puts his own pollen from something else on there. I mean, it's all a risk. I, I, I may think that I'm pollinating or I'm hybridizing with, um, you know, Mr. Tumbleweed, but old Mr. Fuzzy Bee Butt came over and, you know, pushed some, some other master's voice daylily pollen on it. So, you know. So you would have to like guard it for a day and be like, don't you get yeah, near Yeah, which that. I'm not doing. All right, well. I'm not doing so you know what it's just it's fun it's an experiment but I have to tell you the ones that I've done and that have bloomed you can see the parent traits from both plants and it's really quite fun you get a new bloom oh look look film film my butterfly he's on fiery meadow mama oh and kismet intense orange yes he is this is my favorite part and now he's on the bee balm dwarf bee balm Ooh, ooh. So say he jumps from that to that. That couldn't possibly mess up one of your plants. No. Like, all right. They, you have to. You it has to, to be the same plant to create a another. To, yeah, I think it has to be within the same species or the same family. Um, you know, now if bees move from one one echinacea to another, which is why I collect the seeds on on my echinacea. You could get something totally different. It's not very easy to hybridize echinacea. Like the bees have to do it because where the seeds are formed is so far in you would and you don't know which seed is going to be um the 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 one that you want unless you're doing it on purpose in like a lab or in a greenhouse that is just way too difficult i did look that up but that, that's not happening for me i'm not that i'm not that serious about it i'm super happy going to the nursery and buying a new version <laughs> or or collecting my own seeds and if something fun blooms then i use it um but this is fun. This is the start of everything. This is like the start of my real season where the smiles on my face, drought or not. And of course you can tell my attitude's a little better because we got like two and a half inches of rain, right? Um, the grass is starting to grow finally. My cone flowers, man, one rainstorm. Look at this. I mean, look, I, I just have tons and this is a double. Look at this. It's amazing. It's amazing. Like it, within two days, these it just is. popped. Even, even the, um, the bleeding hearts heliopsis, that looks amazing this year. Uh, so anyway, it's so, begun. The color storm is about to, is about to go. So it's weird because you've been watering the, the grass over there and it really didn't seem like it did anything. Well, cause it, it's dry underneath. So the moisture just goes down or if it's been so hot, the, it just evaporates. It makes me feel better to water it. Um, I did water at night, which helped, I think. It helped sort of jumpstart because now it's really going. Well, we have sulfur water. Can you? use that on your plants does that affect it you think the actually sulfur? we have hard water and hard water kind of locks up minerals and nutrients in the soil 
it's not the best thing. That's why there's a big difference between rainwater and actual hose water. The water, water will help it regardless if you're in a drought, but rain, oh, there's nothing like rain. Everything, look at everything's smiling. You can just tell, you know? It does, it feels totally different around here. It's like the plants all got out of the shower and they're like, ah. I know, and look, this is ugly. I like it, nope. and so does the bee. Um, well, the bee likes it. So that's a lupin called light shades or pink shades or something. It's light pink, and it doesn't belong here. It's very stupid on my part, but the photo looked really white, and I did want to add some pops of white in here. That's a lot of pink, and it's a lot of hideous in the color scheme. It's not a hideous flower. It's hideous in my grand scheme of bright painting um on my canvas <laughs> well is it possible that's gotta go it may change to white because no. don't you have flowers that start well different the colors you know the snapdragons that i um that i grew and brought in so they're actually colored but if you bring them inside where the sun's not hitting the blooms that haven't opened yet they turn white that's the whole reason those are white if you were to leave them out here the whole time they would stay those pretty bright colors um this no this is you know, this is, I'm, I'm happy this grew as well as it did because I bought them as little tiny plants, but that's not the right color for there. So bad, I did bad. Now you can't dig that up now. You really should let it just- I could, but I'd kill it and I'm not gonna do that. No, Worst yeah. case, I just cut the, the flower off, but honestly, whatever. I think only you would have noticed and pointed out that that's bad. Oh I no, don't think... it's next to orange and green. It doesn't go, it just doesn't go. Like it's hurting my head, but I'm gonna leave it because it's doing well. <laughs> so when you plant a garden, it's almost like matching your clothes in a way, right? Uh, none of this really matches, but it does, this garden is all vibrant colors. So, um, you know, there was someone, a lot of people asked about um how you get your garden to look good all season long how do you get color all season long it's it's very difficult to do that however i also have lacks of like lags in bloom times but the one thing that will carry you through is having foliage color so like right now i have the dark um bleeding hearts heliopsis the nine bark is dark the sedum see how red and purpley that is so I have those, the euphorbia is constantly this beautiful burgundy color. So, and you have the blue meadow rue, I have more bleeding hearts and nine barks back there. So I repeat those and put those in the garden because even when things aren't blooming, there's color, there's changing, your eye is still moving. It doesn't move as awesome as when everything's in bloom, but you still have a palette of color to like keep your senses fine. You know what I mean? To keep your senses like, wow, look at this, look, 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 look. Um, you know, nothing is gonna beat the bloom. Nothing is gonna beat bloom, but you are gonna have, you have the capability to use lime foliage and dark, you know, dark, dark greenish burgundy foliage and the purple foliage and the silver foliage. Um, use variegation. You have tons of options to play with foliage and then your blooms will be here. They'll finally be here, but you will still have eye candy throughout the season. Um, and there's also plants that will fill in that bloom earlier than your cone flowers and your day lilies. Um, clematis, uh, dwarf bee balm, all of those things, roses, you can plug those in, but you know, this garden's pretty stuffed that I'm happy to be patient with it, but it also does look good because I plug different foliage colors in. So that is sort of a little trick to keep your senses like excited until your buds are out. And right now, like I kind of don't want it to get any further along because I know once this goes off, then fall comes in winter. <laughs> so I have to, I'm enjoying the, the five or six you know, intense orange. And look how thick this came back this year. Like, look how many buds are on that. Intense orange, wow. Ooh, and some, it was a sangarita, salsa sangarita, I don't even know. Isn't that terrible? I've gotten to the point now where the names are so crazy that I can't quite remember them. They used to be really easy. Because and now, you have too many. Yeah, and then there's like, you know, salsa sangarita, and then there's like a sangarita something else, I don't know. So, so what would you recommend to somebody who starts a garden? You just can't just go buy these flowers that you like and plant them all in the same flower bed. That's what I and did. And expect it to look good. That's, well, I did that. It doesn't. Actually, if you go buy a bunch of plants that you like and they're all in bloom, 
you're gonna have just that time frame where things are in bloom that it looks good. You have to buy, and this, sorry to all the, the husbands right now, you have to buy throughout the season. You have to go, you know, if you're, if you're kind of a, a beginner and you don't know what's gonna bloom um, throughout the season, the best thing you can do is go to your local nursery. They're gonna be a little ahead of schedule bloom time. So like you're gonna go in the spring and they're gonna have peonies with flowers on them already. And ours, if they come up naturally, are gonna follow that like two or three weeks from then. You know, the nurseries want everything to be in bloom at the time, you know, that you're there and buying them. But go like in the spring, you'll see the peonies, you'll see allium, you'll see other things that are blooming for springtime and you'll know what you can purchase to plant in your landscape that's gonna bloom that early. If you have a mid-season lag, like um, between that late spring, early summer, before coneflowers and daylilies come out, you're gonna go to the nurseries and you're gonna see the dwarf bee balm. That's exactly what I did. I saw it, I'm like, oh, this blooms earlier. My, my Jacob Klein bee balm over there, is it Jacob or raspberry? I don't know, don't quote me. Um, but anyway, whatever, whatever bee balm variety I have over there, that's the traditional spreading crazy kind, um, that one blooms later in the summer. So there are different varieties. You can also look for early blooming varieties of daylilies, such as tumbleweed. That thing is blooming now and everybody else is still making buds. So there are abbreviations on daylilies, early, extra early, mid-season, late season, repeat bloomers are always a good thing. They now have repeat blooming daylilies. So you just have to go to the nursery. Like whenever you feel like you have a lag, go to the nursery and find something that's in bloom because that means that it's gonna be coming up at the time that you're gonna need it um, and plug it in or use foliage, man. Foliage, don't underestimate foliage. It's, it's amazing. It really does help, you know, with the contrast. It helps move your eye until you get to your bloom where everything is just like, <gasps> yay. I have a good idea. What? Why don't you come up with flower bed blueprints so I don't have to bust my butt helping you plan all this stuff flower for bed. other people. Like, are there blueprints? I got a hard enough time doing my own. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, but you you do flower beds for other people. Yeah. Is there a way? Are there <laughs> flower bed blueprints? Did you what see happened? That? Was that a Japanese beetle? Probably getting revenge. Man, something just tried to go. Kamikaze, you for killing his buddies the... over there. I know. I I just went for my yeah. jugular. It went for the jugular. Did you see that? Well, that's what they do. No, and you know what? Just for that, I'm coming to push this stupid thing in. Get in there. Oh, that is, I, you, you know what's see? funny? Everybody thinks I'm the violent one, but you're the one on here killing bugs <laughs> all the time. I know, I know, if they only knew. <laughs> the, I'm not killing bugs. Don't ever say that. I love my bugs. I kill invasive jerks. That's what I kill. And I, and I will never get rid of the invasive jerks. Invasive bugs are bugs too. What? Invasive bugs are bugs too. And they'll always be here. Yeah. But I'll be damned if I'm going to sit around and watch them devour stuff if I can help it, man. Well, well, and you know what? It's kind of a challenge because when you go for them, they're like, they, you know, you now you know, you like, you got to go like this and swoop because they fall to the ground. Let me show you one because this, well, we did a video on this one, didn't we? This is where I don't like it. This gets graphic, but, folks. Now, so they know what, they know, they know you're coming for them. Like this guy, he's going to stick his little legs out and then, and I have him. And you know what? They're kind of sticky in your hand. You got to kind of keep moving them. Oh, look, two doing the dirty. Now, why can't you drive look, three miles the... down the road and let them go? Because they'll be back. What do you mean? He'll go to somebody else's garden. There's going to be plenty two. of gardens before here. Oh, boy. Ew, four. Yeah, you're... Ew. <laughs> you just... Ew. I hate the way they feel. Ugh. Watch out. Your dog's getting all worked up. Look at this. I'm picking bait. Watch. This is like, this is like a martial art. You want exercise? Come to my yard, yeah, man. But we can change You know beetles. what? I, I can't see too many other women out there doing this. Well, they probably don't have gardens like this. Well, of course not, but still. I do it. it do you think they it. do this at the nursery too? They have, they hire somebody to go around and. No, I think the nurseries use pesticides, which I don't approve of. So it's either this. Oh, darn. Did you see that? Um, I, they use pesticides. Oh, look at this. It's going to open. <gasps> look at the style of bud on this day, Lily. This is one I got from Stephen Franklin. He was in a group and he was listing some for sale. And I was like, oh, I like that one. And of course, in all my boredom, 
Uh, there's no lifeguard on duty, guys. Oh, look at that. I know. Isn't that terrible? Yeah, because birds are supposed to be drinking out of that. Yeah, I got to clean that out. Ugh. Oh, gross. Oh, God, animal. <laughs> so gross. It is gross. So leave them be. I got one, one drop. Is there any way you could plant something that they like, they like, do, yes. away somewhere? Okay, no, but you just triggered a thought. Um, four o'clocks, you know, the flowers, the four o'clocks, they're annuals here. Um, they're poisonous to Japanese beetles, and they're attracted to them. So, but they're also poisonous for other things, too, like your cats and dogs and stuff. So, um, but that is something that you can plant that's, like, pretty and also able, like, you use it as a sacrificial plant. Excuse me while I do some yoga trying to get this stupid thing this is what our fourth <sighs> july you know what though everyone i pick here. everyone i pick just feels like yes that's like a hundred eggs i'm not gonna have to worry about next year Woo! Yuck. dude they're so gross they're like if you hold them too long they get sticky and they burrow in the in your finger cracks and it's gross anyway do you know that bluebirds are invasive sometimes no they're not yeah they are is this a joke no they invade my mornings with their singing all day. Oh, he's this, so pretty. This guy over here, oh, he can't... Oh, he's been flaunting his little tail. I know. He can't seem to hook up with another bluebird because he's a horrible singer. You want to see something? He needs to learn how to whistle. Want to see something? Oh! Oh, good. He got away. No, yeah! That was, that was a moth. Oh. Oh, and there's a ladybug in there. Look. Um, oh. We don't want to put the ladybug... So... So the ladybug at, gets a free hold pass. Hold on, can we, can we show everybody? No, I don't think we want to. I yes, might have look. to put a graphic thing up. If people want to know, do these work? Look how many are in there. So while I'm not able to do it, the, it's catching them. So I feel like this is a benefit. I don't care if I'm drawing them in. I'm drawing them into a trap. Yeah, but that's torture. It is not. It would be you like a mouse torture. trap that, that, you know... Okay. Doesn't kill the you know mouse. Torture, torture quickly. is investing your time, heart, and energy into a landscape to have hordes of these stupid things come in and decimate them. That's torture, and you should care about that. Really? Yes. My emotional well-being is destroyed. Maybe the jolly right green then. giant ain't happy with the fact that you're uh, invading some of his favorite plants. And then he comes around and starts pinching you. Oh. How would you like that? Would that be Dude. okay? Would that be acceptable? I'm not really listening. I'm, yeah. I have things on my mind. Ho, ho, ho. The green giant. I don't care. They, they know I'm a... Oh, oh, darn. Oh, oh, thought I could get him again. Yeah. <laughs> this is my weekend. I always hear her yell out here. It's either a snake or oh, a okay. bug. Now, I just picked all the beetles off this. Look at this. I got to put this in my so pocket. So it's a never-ending battle. Look at Oh, no. I mean, this is, look at this. So on the other side of this. Look. Look at them. Look at them. Your camera is a little we're doing a We're doing a little, little bug orgy here. Yeah. And I got them all. Yes. That's success. That is success. So, I mean... So what is in that thing? Is there a chemical in there that no, poisons it's a them? Lure. So let me show you. Oh look, they're gonna start coming to me. Watch this. Sometimes I can get them. Ah! Good. <laughs> right in my face. <laughs> Sometimes I can get them right in like midair. Watch like that's out. good. Cat like reflexes. One's gonna so, fly in your ear and blow listen, himself up. This comes out off, right? This is the container. Here's the top. What how this is smooth and yellow and, and like slippery. So there's a lure. Um, and a fragrance. So the fragrance attracts them. Also, the lure attracts them. It's almost like a replica of the pheromones used to attract bugs for mating for Japanese beetles. So they come over to it and they try to land and they can't and they slide in the trap. Yeah, but what kills them? That's horrible. <laughs> That is just not good. Well, I take them, I take them out, and I drown them in a bucket. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. I take it back, because you know, drowning is a little right, bit right now. They're probably a whole bunch suffocating. in there, mating, feeling good. So you know what? Look at this guy. He's upside down, and now he's in with his buddies. I mean, it is a party, baby. So that's that. There's but anyway, no remorse with you, huh? Not with these things, man. This is like this is like an adrenaline rush. What is this plant right here? What? That looks pretty cool. That's lamb's ear with a purple bloom. It's just a different variety from the big tall ones that you that you see. Look at this, terrible. Rain also brings weeds. And these are terrible, these begonias. You will not see these on the tour. These are coming out. 
So those are just annuals you picked I up I to add something color. Something happened. The leaves were green, and now like we got we had a cold snap, and all the leaves turned rust, and that rust color just doesn't fit, man. Everything's a mess. I don't care. I love it anyway. So what's your plan for today? You're just gonna run around here and well, I don't uh, know if you if you're willing to bugs? film if you're willing to film me and catch bugs, you're welcome to do that because. I, mean, I don't think anybody wants to sit here and listen to you crunching you know bugs. what you know why because they're doing the same thing at home you can't tell me people aren't out there with their soapy cups of water look so at, look at this how about this are no, there plants <sighs> oh meet you ah! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ew. God. but you know what i mean normally what? i carry yeah. I'm being crazy right now, but normally I carry a soapy cup of water. But because I wanted to do um, to show you how to collect pollen on the day lily, somehow it turned into beetle catching. All right, you might want to pick the bug off What's the dog the there. With my big boy, my big girl. Huh? I need to She's get all her. excited. She's like, "What is she doing here? She's fetching these little bugs, and she's Look really this. excited about this it." This one. This is the storm, the rainbow rhythm storm shelter does not look anything like the tag i will tell you and this is not the tag but it doesn't look like that what else nothing else is really going on well since what two days ago so just before the rain oh the rain makes everything i was gonna ask you happen. is there anything you can plant that won't attract these beetles yes very ugly boring things okay are they attracted to the color you think they're attracted to anything they can hang their little shiny butts off of and get some, like that. What yeah. What are the other invasive beetles yeah. you, you like to squish? Lily beetles? Yes. Oh, I can show you those too. Aren't they the same? You want to see some lily beetles? I can show you in real time lily beetles too. So you want to show them? Come. There was a whole bunch in my vegetable garden the other day. So these are my favorite. These are the eyeliner lilies. They're white lilies. And they've been in here for years. And the other day I was down here like weeding and I saw a whole bunch. Oh, maybe we got them all. Oh no, there's one here. Look. This guy's gonna drop too. Watch, unless he flies. I can't. Oh, he dropped. He flew. Look, there's a fly right there. He don't care. He's kind of cool. He's striped. I've, I've seen him. I think he's an onion fly. Don't quote me on it though. I looked up something. He was really cool and I looked up um, what type of fly he was, and I'm pretty sure he had something to do with a vegetable. Well, anyway, so I missed him, but we did collect a whole bunch, and the deer ate the leaves off this guy, but luckily he's back here, so you can't tell. Oh, there's one right there, Where? I think. Where? They're back here. Oh, yeah, there is. Oh. Oh, God, it's like a snuff film. And, like, either the male or the female, one of them squeaks when you Oh, I up. just ran into that thing. Oh, there's one on my, ah, oh, there's yeah. one on my neck. There was. Go, buddy. Oh, look, there's one on the peak of this, on the bud. This is what they do. They eat buds. So anyway, when I feel good, I've gotten quite a few so far. So lily beetles, they, I mean, um. So lily beetles, you have to get early on. Right now they're hatching, um, or they're, they're coming out, like, on the undersides of the leaves in April and May, you're going to see the little red jelly bean looking eggs. You have to squish those or you're going to get all of the, your leaves are going to get eaten. And then they hang off the leaf and they cover themselves in poop, which is what those black goopy things are underneath your lily leaves. And then you have to scrape them off or they eat till their heart's content. They go in the ground. They emerge as a red lily beetle. So that's that. Anyway, enough about bug chasing. I know. But that's pretty... how you, that's how you collect pollen. <laughs> <laughs> Can we end like yeah, that? We collect know. pollen and, and bodies. So I have to go put this in the in the fridge for now. So that needs to go in the refrigerator, and you're going to store that in the I'm refrigerator store that all until, winter? No, I'm going to store it until something pretty opens I can use oh, it Oh, that's right. You're going to come out here with cotton swabs and start Toothpicks. playing Mother Nature again. Yes, Mad Scientist, remember? Yeah. I'm going to play Mad Scientist. It's anyway, that's more it. like Little Shop of Horrors after seeing that episode. Probably. And you want to, do you want to, um, you need to reel the hose in no, and put it nice. You know what I want to do today? No. Sit in the air conditioning <laughs> and celebrate my independence. Yeah, well, that's tomorrow. That means I'm independent of working for you today. 
Hmm. Hmm. That's not going to work. But. I don't think so. It never does. <laughs> My weekends are never weak. No. I'm always weak after the weekend, but... True. All right, honey. Can't wait to do some gardening with you today. Well, good. I got stuff to do. Good. So, Get to work. Later. Happy 4th. Yes.